Hello, my name is Dr. Lawani. I'm a consultant pediatrician. Okay, so um, recommended immunizations. We have um, the National Program on Immunization Schedule, which um, has been organized by the Federal Ministry of Health, that every Nigerian child should partake in. Also, we have some other vaccines which are not part of the National Program on Immunization, but which are essential for your child to take as well. I will be enumerating those on the National Program on Immunization, and I will also be enumerating those that are still important for your child to take. And these vaccines are available at some private health institutions in Nigeria. So for the National Program on Immunization Schedule, we have the first set of vaccines that a child should receive should be at birth. At birth, your child is supposed to receive three vaccines. The first one is called the BCG vaccine. And BCG vaccine is important for prevention of severe forms of tuberculosis. The second vaccine at birth is the oral polio virus vaccine. And the third one is the hepatitis B vaccine. So as the name says, hepatitis B for the prevention of hepatitis B virus infection and oral polio vaccine for the prevention of poliomyelitis. After giving at birth, the next vaccine is at six weeks old when the child is six weeks of age. And that will include um, six vaccines that come together as one. For the, in the National Program on Immunization use, they come together as five, which is called the pentavalent vaccine. However, in some private health institutions, they are available as exazine vaccine. So penta, meaning the number five, it contains five vaccines. And exazine, meaning six exa, contains six vaccines. The, what makes up the number six is the IPV. IPV is um, an intramuscular in, um, injection for the prevention of poliomyelitis. Now, the pentavalent vaccine contains, like I said, five vaccines and they include DPT, D for diphtheria, P for pertussis, T for tetanus. And then it also contains the HIV vaccine. The HIV vaccine is HIV, that's Hemophilus Influenza Type B vaccine, which is used for the prevention of um, bacterial infections caused by the, by the bacteria Hemophilus Influenza, which is responsible for common childhood illnesses like upper respiratory tract infections. Then, so I've mentioned for the DPT, the HIV vaccine. The fifth one is the hepatitis B vaccine. Now, like I said, when you have IPV in addition to these five vaccines, it's called exazine. So some private health institutions have the exazine and they give it, you know, as one shot. But in places where you do not have the exazine, after your child has taken the pentavalent, they still give the IPV, which is the injection for the prevention of poliomyelitis. So that's for six weeks, pentavalent plus IPV or exazine. In addition to that, the child will take PCV. PCV is a um, pneumococcal conjugate vaccine used for the prevention of bacterial infections caused by the uh, bacteria called um, pneumococci. In addition to that, you also have the, okay, so I've mentioned the pentavalent, IPV, the um, PCV, 
And then yes, the last one will be the rotavirus vaccine. Rotavirus is an oral vaccine. Your child will take it by mouth and it's used for the prevention of, of diarrheal disease as rotavirus is the commonest cause of diarrhea in children. Yes, so that is for six weeks. I hope you are all following me. Then for 10 weeks, 10 weeks is basically the same thing as the six weeks vaccine. So everything I've mentioned for six weeks, your child will also get that for 10 weeks. 14 weeks is also the same thing. So after birth, six weeks, 10 weeks, and then 14 weeks. 14 weeks too is the same thing you're getting as six weeks, 10 weeks. You also get them at 14 weeks. Now, after the 14 weeks vaccination, the next time your child will be qualified to take another vaccine is when the child is six months of age. Now, in the National Program on Immunization Schedule, we have just vitamin A. But like I said, there are some additional vaccines that your children can get in private health institutions. And in private health institutions like ours, um, we also give the flu vaccine. So for six months of age, your child will be taking vitamin A and the flu vaccine. The next vaccination, okay, so the next vaccination is at seven months when your child comes to take the second dose of the flu vaccine. So the flu vaccine is to prevent common cold, you know, things like cough, runny nose in children. The next one will be at nine months. So at nine months, your child will qualify to take the measles vaccine, yellow fever vaccine, and the meningococcal vaccine. So meningococcal vaccine is used for the prevention of meningitis. Meningitis is an infection affecting the covering of the brain. So after nine months, we move up to 12 months of age. So when the child is 12 months old, the child is qualified to take another dose of vitamin A and then also will take another dose of the meningococcal vaccine. So the meningococcal vaccine, like I said, is given at nine months and also when your child is 12 months of age. So for the national program on immunization, vaccination stops at one year of age when your child is 12 months old. But you have other facilities in the country where your child can continue to have additional vaccines beyond one year of age. So at 15 months of age, your child is qualified to have the MMR vaccine. So the MMR vaccine is a combination of three vaccines, which includes measles, mumps, and the rubella vaccine. Then also at 15 months of age, um, your child is still qualified to okay so apart from the mmr vaccination at 15 months um i think that is when we also give varicella vaccination so varicella vaccination is for chicken pox for the prevention of chicken pox after 15 months the next one is at 18 months of age at 18 months the child is qualified to take another dose of vitamin a and um, also varicella and uh, DTAP. So DTAP is a booster dose of DPT. DPT, like I told you before, is for the prevention of diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus. Um, pertussis is what we all know as whooping cough. Diphtheria is also an infection of the respiratory tract, which can be deadly. And then tetanus is an infection we get when we have um, wounds that are, you know, that are contaminated from the soil. After 18 months, we move on to um, 24 months of age. So at 24 months of age, that's the child is two years, the child is qualified to take another booster dose of um, DTAP. Some organizations go ahead to give exazine at 18 months and even at 24 months. That's if the child has started with exazine from six weeks of age, and the child takes it at 14 weeks, the child can have the booster doses at 18 months and also at 24 months. At 24 months as well, your child also qualifies to have the vitamin A supplement. So we have booster doses of all these vaccines I've mentioned, but at two years, 
and also at five years of age, your child qualifies for booster doses of MMR vaccination, DTAP vaccination, varicella vaccination. This varies according to the health institution that you take your child to. Thank you. Okay, the common symptoms of um, ear infections and throat infections in children as follows. For the ear infections, your child might be, you know, tugging the ear. So repeated tugging of the ear, you should suspect that something is going on. Or when you touch the child's ear, the child cries out in pain. The child might also run a fever. Or sometimes you actually see discharge coming out of the ear. So those are the common symptoms or um, presenting complaints for ear infections. Now for throat infections, um, the common symptoms will be things like sore throat, your child complains of pain when they swallow liquid or solids. Um, your child can also have a cough and then the cough can be productive of sputum. Um, also for the throat infections, the child can come up with a fever and um, some of them have vomiting, poor appetite, the appetite is reduced. Yeah, so those are the common things your child will complain of. But for smaller children, they might not be able to complain of these things. But one thing you will notice for smaller babies, the child might be drooling saliva, so there will be drooling of saliva, the appetite will be reduced, and the child will also have a fever. I hope you have all learned something on um, what we have talked about so far. So, on behalf of everyone here at Duchess International Hospital, wish you all a very happy Children's Day.